Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today is going to be an update video on what I consider to be the best budget long range FPV setup because this is the one that actually works for me day in day out and it's highly recommended because I've put quite a lot of time in this, a lot of crashes, a lot of rebuilds, or just not really rebuilds, just hot glue and tape and it's still flawless like it just flies amazing. So let's talk about some of the components I'm using here and this is the final form of it. I'm not planning on changing anything else because it just works absolutely great. However, there was some things that were ne that needed to be replaced here. And if you're curious about the build video, I'll have that link down below. So let's get started from the exterior down to the interior. So this is the Zod Orbit and I'm calling this the V2 because the one that I got is quite different than any of anyone else really because I have a full fledged plastic piece on the bottom that basically protects the bottom here. And this I've lost in one of the crashes. So I've gone ahead and 3D printed it. It's, I didn't create this, it's on Thingiverse, which is really nice. Like I really like before purchasing a product to go online, look at Thingiverse if there are any mods or any replacement parts. So this way, if you have a 3D printer, it's a really enjoyable experience modding it. I've also designed a iNav upgrade kit, which is really cool because when you first receive this, you do get a wooden piece on the bottom here now I've designed this and if it breaks you just go ahead and print out a new one uh, it's really easy to print that's the main goal of my design when, when I design something no no support material really fast to print and just overall very functional so this would slide in right here and it would hold the battery into place now I do get around one hour of flight time with this with 4s lithium-ion packs like these guys right here uh, however I've never been able to go past 35 minutes not due to the battery but due to me just getting bored and want to start doing tricks and then I end up just crashing. With a lithium ion pack, you're going to get quite a lot of range. It's insane how efficient this thing is. However, saying that, with the default setup comes with this gyro. And to be honest, I just got rid of it. It's really nice to practice on when you first receive it, which I highly recommend before converting it into an iNav setup. And that's what I did in the beginning until I got bored and I said, okay, I'm gonna completely do a makeover now. It's going long range. The amps on cruising is around six amps or four amps, between four and six amps, which is insane. It's super efficient. For the ESC that comes pre-installed with this, if you buy the BNF model, I highly recommend you immediately replace it, especially if you're gonna be doing long range because I did have it die out on me and I needed to wait two weeks to get this thing back. And it was plugged in. The VTX went out. I've gone ahead and replaced it. Everything else still works perfect. Let's talk about the components here. The servos are still the default servos in here. For the receiver, I'm using the R9, the big one here. And as you can tell, it has the PCB antennas, which I've, I think I found this on uh, Thingiverse and then I just printed them, slid them in, and then just gone ahead and super glued those into place. I just cut slits and just stuck them in there. Now just be careful with these here. And then I just brought the wires in the middle, connected to the receiver. The ESC is under here. I'll have a link to the one I used down below. That's the one I trust now because the last thing you want is your motor to die and you're like three kilometers away. It's an absolute nightmare. And that's what happened to me before with the with the stock ESC, which I highly recommend you change. Now for the flight controller, I'm using the Matek F405 wing, which I find to be a phenomenal wing flight controller, whether it's this one or the smaller one, the F411, I think. Those are absolutely phenomenal wing flight controllers. There's also an F7 version, which is pretty cool. Uh, might be a little overkill, but this is working out just fine for me. However, that one has, has a bit more features and um, it just comes down to your budget and what you really want to do with it. So they're going to perform really great. Matek is top-notch quality from anything. Even their GPSs are the GPSs I recommend. However, if we take a look at my GPS, I'm not using that. And why am I not using a Matek GPS? Well, at the time I was waiting for them to arrive and I just couldn't wait and I wanted to take it out and I stuck this GPS. This GPS works great. However, it takes really long to lock. Uh, so you have to boot it up, wait, and you know, while your, your airplane or quadcopter has been booted up, it'll start draining around one amp roughly with all the components that are connected. So it's really nice to have a fast locking GPS, which is why I would recommend a Matek one. And I'll have those linked down below if you don't know. I'll have everything here linked down below of what I recommend. Now this has taken quite a lot of damage, which we're gonna take a look at here. For example, this top cover here is, I lost one of the plastic pieces that will connect it here, but it's, you know, that one right there. But what I did instead, I just put this uh, tape here. This is one of the best tapes you can possibly purchase for wings. It's, it's really strong and it sticks 
perfect to this foam here and uh, it just even with crashes it'll hold really great sometimes even better than hot glue I'll have it linked down below I also got this from Banggood I don't know where I placed it but you do get a pretty damn big roll and um, you can do quite a lot with it and I really love it as you can tell here I never have to worry about this going anywhere that's how good this tape this tape is there's nothing else holding this but just the tape now for the antenna what I've used here I've actually I used to use the Pagoda 2 antennas and then I actually received this one. And this is the Ax, the Axie 2, I think. These are Lumineer ones. I got this little combo that comes with even the uh, the patch antenna. And I don't know if it's just the quality of it or the length of it, but I am getting noticeably a lot better image quality. It is slightly more expensive than a lot of things on the market, but as you can tell, it is pretty long here, um, which is very useful, especially for an application of this nature. For the camera, I wanted to keep it, I wanted to keep the whole airplane as aerodynamic as possible, basically. So what I decided to do, other than the GPS stick it out here and the antennas, is go for the run cam. So what I've done here, as you can tell, just a little 3D printed part that goes here. However, this board gets so freaking toasty that it does warp the plastic piece, but that's fine. I've never had any issue. And if you take a closer look, you'll find my VTX right there. I think this is the Dominator or something. This is like the most powerful VTX from AKK, which I never really broadcast that full power, but it's really nice to know that you have that full power when you need it. And for my camera, it's just, I'm just using that tape to hold it in place. So overall, it just works really great here. And then I just stick that thing back in and boom. And again, I'm using that tape up here because it holds really, really well and it's acting as a latch. I'm going to give you another look at the VTX. The VTX is placed right there. I just, I think I have it hot glued or maybe not even hot glued. Maybe just a couple dabs of hot glue I have on this thing. And you can see the MMCX is a right angle. I, I recommend you actually add a right angle, which goes into the SMA port. And as well as these 3D uh, printed parts here I've designed. It's just a really small adapter. You just put a little bit of super glue or just hot glue here and hot glue here and just stick it up here. I did break it, but it gives it more structural integrity sort of here for this little bridge, which um, worked out really great. And for the bottom piece, I just use this thing here and everything just fits really nice. It's really good to always keep your wing as clean as possible. And I just ate some of that right there. Uh, should have been a little bit easier on it. But yeah, and then this just falls into place and that'll hold my battery. And the CG of CG like this with the uh, run cam split here is uh, spot on. So I really, I rarely have to play with the CG, even though I'm using three different types of batteries, which is, you know, this flat 4S uh, lithium ion pack and this uh, squared 4S lithium ion pack. Sometimes I have to play just a tiny bit, but not much. And usually my CG is spot on my center of gravity. As of breaking and repairing, as you can tell, I've gotten into some really nasty damage, really nasty stuff. But I was always just able to put it back together, just, you know, get all the pieces and then just super glue them. And you know, everything else just works out usually great. The main parts of a really, really hard crash that'll come out is usually where the, where the things are glued together. That's where it breaks most of the time. So the glue isn't that strong sometimes. Uh, so it'll just rip, usually a nice clean cut rip, and then you just go into that place and just add some hot glue and some tape and stuff, and you're good in that perspective. Even though it seems this damaged, it still flies really, really great. And uh, it's the wing that I trust the most and that I'd actually highly recommend because it's a really well-priced wing, especially if you're a beginner. It's really nice because it comes with all the uh, necessity features for you to practice flying. You know, out of the box when you get this, I think it's like a hundred bucks or something. It comes with this inbuilt flight controller and this inbuilt flight control has a stabilizer and it even has launch control and landing control kind of. So what it does is it makes it really easy for you to throw in the air and just start flying. That is an amazing feature because you reduce the risk of crashing. And then once you feel confident enough and just ready, then you can just start doing the iNav upgrade. Just rip that thing out, bring in a flight controller, start connecting everything. But I do recommend if you're going long range to uh, replace the ESC. Uh, that is a big, big thing to take note of here. So if, you, if that is your end goal, then whenever you find an ESC on sale, jump on it and just grab it for this guy because he will need it. The ESC will go out and it won't take so long for it to go out. So that's something to take note of. Also, another thing which I really don't like, but I'm kind of stuck with is the motor. Now, the motor is a really great motor, but the only issue is the propeller. It's proprietary. So I've had to pick up a bunch of these propellers uh, because, you know, it's a proprietary propellers, but I could just could never find any motor that's this efficient. 
and I don't want to get rid of the efficiency and replace this motor so I'm currently stuck with the proprietary propellers for now uh, and I'm not really upset they're not that expensive so if you are looking for a long-range FPV wing or one to practice on I do highly recommend you get the Zod Orbit and I'll have everything I have on this link down below and um, well that's it guys I just wanted to create this update video I really hope you guys enjoyed it and everything's linked down below let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one peace out guys